Well, thank you for making the great effort to come out this evening to celebrate this Eucharist. Uh, I was asked by someone right before Mass, you know, do you ever cancel a Mass? And I said, no, we don't. And the reason is because the priest lives so close. <laughs> so I'm sorry that we take advantage of you maybe, but we do like to have these Masses and pray for those who can't uh, make the Mass. Uh, I'm, I'm reminded of a story of a, uh, uh, a little country parish and uh, there's a pastor there and one time there was a snowstorm and only uh, the pastor showed up and only one person showed up for the service and uh, that he was a, a rancher and so the uh, pastor was there and he said well you, you know you're the only person here do you want me to give you a message. And, and he said, maybe because you're the only one you'd rather not. And, and the rancher said, well, you know, uh, Pastor, uh, uh, if I'm out there ready to feed the cattle and only one steer comes up, I'm going to feed that steer. And so the pastor said, okay, well, then I, I will nourish you. And so the pastor gave a 40-minute sermon. And the rancher at the end said, Reverend, I said I'd feed him, but not the whole bale of hay. <laughs> I won't give you the whole bale of hay tonight. How's that? Uh, today is this beautiful feast of Christ the King. And Christ the King is such an anomaly in so many ways. Because we have Christ the King who initiates his kingship, not in power and in glory, but upon the throne of the cross, with a crown of thorns, with a scepter that had been just a reed, and then with his hands pierced with the nails. That's the beginning of the kingship of Christ, is in that utter humiliation, where he is the king who's totally opposite of all kings. Because rather than coming in power and glory, he comes in simplicity, humility, he comes with total self-giving love. And he says that is the only way to true relationship with the Father is in total self-giving love. And so he offers himself upon the cross. As opposed to most kings who would garner an army and then send them out to fight to defend the king and his interests, Jesus is just the opposite. He's the one who embraces the battle. He's the one who succumbs to the power of evil in order, to, in order to overcome it through his resurrection and that gift of eternal life. And so we have the beginning of the kingship of Christ is one of suffering. And so many people have suffered over the years in fidelity to Christ. They have suffered in so many ways in persecution. You know, I just think of three in particular. Uh, one was St. Thomas More. St. Thomas More was the Chancellor of England, second only to the king. And yet, when the king decided to defy God because of his own personal desires, Thomas never betrayed the king, never criticized the king, and never rebelled against the king, but he refused to go along with him. And the king, Henry VIII, insisted that Thomas do so. And because Thomas would not, he was sentenced to be beheaded. And on his way to being beheaded, Thomas had one thing to say. I die as the king's good servant, but as God's first. It's a great message for each and every one of us. I die as the king's good servant, but God's first. We are always called to put God as first. Another one of these martyrs was in 1927 in Mexico, when there was a huge persecution of Catholics in that country. And so many suffered death in so many horrendous ways. And two in particular, one Father Miguel Pro was a Catholic priest. He was about 30 years, 35 years old at the time. And uh, he was apprehended and accused of plotting against the government, but mainly it was just the fact that he was a Catholic priest. 
And without a trial, he was sentenced to the firing squad. And the leaders at that time even called in the press because they thought, well, here we have this young priest and he's going to grovel before us and ask for mercy and everything. And so they called in the press with their cameras and everything in order to take pictures of this. And instead, the Padre Pro only asked for one thing. He says, I want some time to pray. And he knelt down and he prayed and then he stood up and he extended his arms out and he said, Vivo Cristo Rey, long live Christ the King. And then he was shot. But that cry became the rallying cry for those who truly wanted religious freedom and a respect for God and the presence of God within their lives. And that was the second one, a 15-year-old boy by the name of Jose Sanchez, who has been canonized now as a saint. But Jose was encouraged to uh, deny Christ. In fact, he was, said, all you have to say is death to Christ the King. That's all you have to say. And it's indicated that even his parents encouraged him some to say death to Christ the King. But he was resolute, and he said, Viva Cristo Rey, long live Christ the King. And again, he was martyred for that faith in Christ Jesus. Those beautiful examples remind us of the fidelity to which we are called to truly recognize Christ as the King of our lives, as the Lord of all that is his. And we hope to share in the fullness of God's kingdom. Yes, that kingdom that will come in glory and in power and majesty at the end of time as Christ brings together the fullness of his kingdom in the glory of eternal life. But in the midst of this time, our cry is, long live Christ the King, not only in the world, but also in my heart.